do. They just, they're not progressives. They're Democrats. They're not progressives. They're liberals until they destroy it and then they become something else. They just used fear and intimidation. Where have I heard that before? Used fear and intimidation. And they co opted this party. Well, guess what? Democrats, you're done. You're done. You've sold your soul piece by piece, time and time again, to these people. And now it's over. The Democrats that we all knew, most people don't really understand this yet, it's over. It's a progressive party. The Republicans are playing and they're traveling down the same path, except they're like doing it like grandpa. They're just moving a little slower. You know what I'm saying? Anytime President Obama is cornered on socialism or overspending, what does he say, and accurately so, what does he point out that the Republicans always did? The truth is, some of these comments, when you actually ask, well, this is based on what? This notion that Obama's a socialist, for example. Nobody can really give you a good answer. I can. Um, much less when they, right. you know, make... Uh, they would say mandating that people have to buy insurance or something like that. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, uh, <laughs> the sort of plan proposed by current uh, Republican nominee Mitt Romney. Bingo! So it, it, it doesn't make too much sense. <laughs> because we know these guys aren't progressive socialists, no. See, first of all, that's not an answer to the question. They're just pointing to each other. And we're like, yeah, I hate those guys. Yeah, I hate those guys. That doesn't get us anywhere. He's right, the Republicans have done it. And that's the problem. You see, we've been tricked into boxing ourselves into the R and D and defending those sides at all costs without engaging our brain. All the while, they have morphed into the exact same thing, except extra strength and light. You think you have a distinct choice, but it's really one in the same. They, there used to be an option in this country. There used to be an option that believed in small government, an option that actually listened to what you had to say. They actually even cared about what you had to say as well. Last night I showed you how progressives think they are better than you. They know more than you. But that's not a problem just exclusive to the left. That is Republicans as well. Lindsey Graham. Hi, Lindsey Graham. I just love you so much. Why don't you come down here and have some sweet tea with me? Getting hammered by the Tea Partiers for his left-leaning tendencies. Good. Keep it up, Tea Partiers. They say they'll vote him out. Well, Lindsey didn't like that. So here's what his statement was from a staff member. Senator Graham is a thinking person's conservative. I expect him to do well among the voters who have IQs in triple digits. Oh, can't you say something like, like that in a more snotty tone? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you're not being presented with a choice. You're not being listened to, because you're stupid. <laughs> you don't have triple digit IQ. <laughs> and Washington will do whatever it chooses to do. Let me go back to Missouri now. Last night, they had a vote on the insurance mandate in Barack Obama's health care bill. It was close, very close, 71 to 29 <laughs> percent. Yeah, 71 percent against it. Now, do you think that's going to stop the administration from going forward? No, of course not. No, those are just racists, most likely, that voted against it or some sort of astroturf campaign. You see, you've been ignored all the way, all the whole time. 59% want to repeal the health care bill. Hmm. See, maybe you're confused. You thought this whole country thing was about you and we the people. It's not. No, it's not. It's about them. There's another poll came out from Rasmussen. You have to see this. 84%. 84% say the country is headed in the wrong direction. 84% percent. But over here, this is really interesting. On the right track, 67 percent. But who are these people? They are the uh, ruling class. These are the people in Washington that are the ruling class. They're the people that know better than you. <laughs> they have higher IQs than these 84 percent of peons. So how far apart are we? 151 points. 151 points. That's quite a chasm here. That's not a republic. Shouldn't that be, shouldn't it be a little closer?
Politicians are going in one direction, we're going in another. And when you have it, why did I say on 9-11 it was important for you to know you're not alone? Because if you know you're not alone, you're not gonna budge. 84% of Americans know they're not alone. They ain't budging. But almost 70% of those ruling us also don't think they're alone. 70, they're like looking around, these people are stupid out there. Let them eat cake. Hey, that's where I recognize this, the French Revolution. That's right, all we have to do is put a little gates here. And we've got Versailles, isn't that great? These are the people that look at you in their coach. Oh yes, let them eat cake. How do they live like those peasants? Look, how do you solve this? First of all, you have to get active, you have to read, you have to be informed, you have to pay attention. You're already doing that. Next thing, you vote them out. The next thing, you realize you cannot spend 34 years in Congress and not become arrogant. It is impossible. Our founders knew it. You cannot abide by the law when you're above the law. Two words solves this. Term limits. Both of them say they're for it, all the Republicans and the Democrats, but they're not. Why? Because they both lose. Term limits. Term limits. If you don't do it, you think these people are going to give up power? They're behind the gates. And you? Who wins? Who wins in this scenario? Well, who's getting the extra power? Are you getting extra power? Or are they gathering power? Who knows what's in these 2,500 page bills? Would that be you or them? Who's writing them? Who even knows what, how they all connect? Who's exempt from the laws that are in those bills? You or them? Who gets stuck with the tax bill to do those things? You or them? Who has to pay for it when the inevitable happens and it doesn't work and they need even more power, more government, more money? That would be both parties, both parties are heading in the same direction. One's in a jet fighter and the other one's in a horse and buggy, but the destination is the same, make no mistake, big spending, arrogance, and corruption. Do you remember when Nancy Pelosi said, I'm gonna drain the swamp? Yeah, yeah, because the Republicans were into big spending, corruption, and arrogant in 2006. Okay, so did they drain the swamp? She thinks so, watch. When I came in, we said, we'll drain the swamp. And we did. We had passed the most sweeping ethics reform in the history of the Congress. Mm, yeah, yeah. Does anybody think we're better or worse on corruption now? Even the slimiest of the slime in, uh, crawls out from under his rock in his office, Barney Frank, and says, let me tell you something. Maxine Waters is wrong. Maxine Waters getting hammered by Barney Frank? Washington views corruption as standard fare. President said that Charlie Rangel, facing multiple charges, on ethics should retire now with dignity. Retire with dignity. Let me ask you, peasant, if you would have done what Charlie Rangel did, do you think you'd go to jail? Yes, you would. Retire with dignity. Why, yes, of course. Why didn't we let Bernie Madoff just retire with some dignity, man? Because there's something called a law, equal justice. See, that's the division of the ruling class yet again. You'd go to jail, but they'll retire with dignity. They'll get a post office named after them. And then here comes Al Sharpton, and he comes out and says this. You begin to see a pattern of people being called and on to being investigated, allegations, they end up nothing. One would be very naive not to say, well, wait a minute, why should we rush to judgment, particularly when you have Charlie Rangel, who's done so much for uh, and his district and the country, and Maxine Waters, and we've already seen two high-profile black mm -hmm. leaders hit heavy by the media, the Reverend, and then nothing's there. It is so good to hear him say, let's not rush to judgment, isn't it? Seriously. More things change, the more they stay the same. I told you back in January they would divide us on race. Well, how did I know that? Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. You just have to know history. You saw it coming too. When progressives get into trouble, the backs against the wall, they do things. They'll do anything. Play the race card, that one always works. That's why they fire people because they think somebody on TV might talk about them. They are running scared. 
The case falls apart when the record is corrected, and we're correcting it every night, and so are you. Does anyone remember the accusations made by John Lewis that he was spat on and called the N-word? Everybody in America has heard that story, but has anyone in America seen this? The correction from the New York Times. They